So, hi, I am here with Bob Lee of the Asian American Art Center, and I will be talking about the grant itself. But prior to me speaking about the grant, um, Bob Lee is going to tell us about the history of the Asian American Art Center so we have an idea of its roots and its ideology. I'm uh, Bob Lee, and I am uh, want to thank Metro and the Equity in Action Program for this. Uh, opportunity and uh, Pratt Institute Semantic Lab for their participation and support. And to Karen, Karen Huang, who has done so much to make AAC programs accessible and visible. I didn't know I was going to speak about the history, but more about uh, the vision that began um, this whole effort in the early days. So a little bit. I guess should mention the the activism in the Asian American community um, uh, that started in the 60s and 70s in the Asian American community was was much about seeking a way to serve uh, the community in Lower Manhattan. We had a new outlook, and we're initiating programs and starting local services. Uh, so much was not known and had to be explored, uncovered, learning about the community and gathering resources. Uh, we were not just Americans, we were now Asian Americans. And in discovering ourselves in that way, uh, artists were stirred, uh, seeking visibility and attention for their work. In exhibiting and documenting such artists, the Art Center AAC's uh, Artists Archive has become a way to demonstrate the richness of the Asian American art field from the post-World War II era to the recent present. It marks the beginning of a consciousness of the significance of Asian American art in the United States. When 9-11 hit and most sectors of this community were suffering severely, I was asked uh, by people doing research, uh, what is the primary problem our community faces? Uh, my rep reply to that was how our community is perceived. It's how the mainstream understands us, and how we see our, and understand ourselves, particularly in the arts. What Asian American artists were doing was hardly known at all. Preserving our work, the artist's work, keeping a record of the exhibitions we were doing, then others and future generations could see what was happening in those early years. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. So hello, everyone. And thank you for taking the time to listen to us talk about our Metro Equity and Action Partnership Grant between the Asian American Art Center and the Semantic Lab. My name is Karen Huang, and I have been part of the team working on this grant, which technically is still not quite over. I've had the distinct and unique pleasure of being part of the staff of both the Asian American Art Center and Semantic Lab. And I've had also the distinct and unique privilege of continuing to collaborate with both throughout the year. I first of all want to say thank you to Tracy Mark and all the staff at Metro for supporting this work. And I, although I am the speaker today, I want to acknowledge the colleagues and friends who are explicit contributors to this grant. In addition to Bob Lee of AAC, there are also Christina Petuelli and Matt Miller, the two co-directors of the Semantic Lab at Pratt. This part of our session will focus specifically on the grant, the problems defined and which we sought to tackle with our work these past nine months, providing a long-term digital preservation solution for one of AAC's collections. It will also hopefully describe the foundation we laid for future work, not only for the Asian American Art Center or for Semantic Lab, but by others who might directly build off our work or who might take some of the strategies used and applied them to their own histories. So now I will introduce our project. 
So a couple of my personal comments that I want to emphasize about this grant, um, if this program continues, is one, that it is designed as a nine-month grant. Uh, for some people, that's a pretty fast turnaround. And two, applicants can apply alone or in partnership. And for partnership grants, at least one of the applicants must be a Metro member. As I said, for our grant, we had two partners. The collection holder, the Asian American Arts Center, with Bob Lee in particular, as, acting as a subject specialist for the project, and the Semantic Lab, which guided the work on the preservation and discovery end. As a brief introduction to the Semantic Lab, Semantic Lab is a research group at the Pratt Institute School of Information. We are a group of librarians, archivists, and information specialists that work together to experiment and innovate ways to apply new information technologies in particular semantic web technologies like linked open data to cultural heritage materials. This equity and action project can be considered one form of the type of work we do. Bob Lee just provided background on the Asian American Arts Center's roots, what it endeavored and the role it played within communities. But in addition to events organized in the AEC gallery, almost from the very beginning, Bob Lee had the foresight to start an archive, which he spoke to. Um, there is an entire archive of materials that began as an artist slide archive that is arranged by artist names, amounting to over 1,500 artists. In addition to this collection of artist files, however, are the collections of AAC specific catalog, catalogs and ephemera, press releases, posters, and ex exhibition flyers. There are over 100 exhibitions represented by these materials. Around 15 years ago, Asian American Arts Center received a cultural grant from the Lower Manhattan Development Corporation, AKA LMDC. LMDC is probably best known as the backing institution for the 9-11 Memorial. Located below Canal Street, AAC was recognized as a cultural institution that had been severely impacted by 9-11 in terms of operations and loss of foot traffic. AAC received an LMDC grant to digitize materials for about 100 artists a sample of 10 works and 10 documents for each for a new digital archive. The digital archive artasiaamerica.org launched in 2009. The image on the upper right of the slide is the artist listing page from artasiaamerica.org. At the same time that AAC was developing the, its digital archive, the neighborhood around AAC was undergoing extreme gentrification. AAC began to divide its space for subleasing at that time. I included here images of one of the first or maybe even the first cultural e equity group rally to show that parallel to our work preparing the digital archives while we were facing hardship due to 9-11, longtime leaders of community cultural organizations from all five boroughs, including Bob, were fighting for recognition by the city and fighting for equitable city funding to continue to operate. The digital, this digital archive is still running and continues to be a top ranking search result and sometimes the only search result for many of the artists represented in the archive. But this was a custom built archive. The company that built it doesn't even have a presence in the US anymore. And although the platform is hosted on servers that are updated, the code itself remains the same. AAC has no in-house staff to support the technical side of the archive. Unless another organization takes on the archive, it is foreseeable that the material for Art Asia America will no longer be available online. But there is still a need for these materials to be accessible to the public. In recent years, there has been growing interest in AAC's work from younger generations. In my own recollection, the Occupy Wall Street People of Color group, and more recently, Think Chinatown. For many, the history of AAC, the time and the communities that intersected with it, are being increasingly thought of as a cultural inheritance, our cultural inheritance, as we move forward in time. And the fact that there is still a need to continue the work of bringing visibility to Asian Americans to have our histories and concerns included as part of mainstream American consciousness was made only too clear with the rise in violence against Asian Americans during COVID. So this project provided the means to ensure that materials documenting AAC's work and engagement remains available. From a practical standpoint, a problem was defined AAC does not have the resources to maintain the tech supporting its digital archive. It is foreseeable that it may continue to degrade until the tech becomes 100% obsolete. We needed a solution that would not necessarily require any technical expertise moving forward, and maybe even no one to manage it at all, but a solution that still had wide public access. 
and we needed ideally to target parts of the digital archive or a collection that could represent the scope of AAC's work. As a collection, the AAC exhibition flyers expresses the breadth of AAC's decades-long work. About 60% of the AAC's exhibition flyers had already been digitized in 2008 for the archive, associated with artists under their documents. The other circa 40% of the exhibition flyers would be digitized for the first time in the scope of this grant. This digitization work was conducted at Pratt's digitization station at the Manhattan campus. Wikimedia Commons was selected um, as our platform for a long-term preservation solution. Wikimedia Commons is an open media file repository. It was first created by the Wikimedia Foundation to support the legal reuse of media files in Wikipedia articles. So you can imagine that a lot of the media files on the Commons are photos or maybe diagrams, et cetera, for use in those Wikipedia articles. In September of 2004, Wikimedia Commons reached its one millionth upload. And here on this slide, you can see the Commons now has over 87 million files available. When you upload to Wikimedia, you have to state that you are either the creator or the copyright holder of the item being contributed, or that the item is in the public domain, and that you grant reuse permission not only to Wikimedia, but in general. Either you need this level of authorization, or you need to make sure a letter is submitted by the person who is the copyright holder or creator granting this permission. For this reason, AAC could never upload its digital archive resources lock, stock, and barrel because a lot of the resources on Art Asia America are images of the work of artists or flyers from other galleries and museums or artist statements, et cetera, clippings from newspapers, um, as well as other materials where the copyright is held by someone else. This is another reason why the AAC exhibition flyers as their creations and their publications was a good collection for this project. Over 350 AAC files have been uploaded for discovery, representing 103 AAC exhibitions. The exhibition flyer files will be hosted there with no further action required by the Asian American Art Center. They can be found by researchers, artists, activists, and of course, Wikipedia editors, whomever, for insertion in essays, web pages, or otherwise. I, for example, added the brochure for the newly uploaded eye to eye exhibition file to AAC's Wikipedia page over the weekend. So I just wanted to show um, what the objects look like on Wikimedia Commons. As you can see here, it shows that there are 352 files here. Um, this page is showing 200. 60% of these were from the original Digital Archive project. The quality of those is actually not as good as the ones that were recently done at um, Pratt. The good thing is, is that if we eventually have the resources and the time, we could make better scans of those um, and upload them on top of the existing ones here. And I think that would be really great if, if that could happen sometime. <laughs> um, so these are mostly single page JPEGs and some of them are uploaded as a file format that I did not previously know, which is called, um, I believe it's called DJVU or DJ, DJ, maybe Deja Vu, but it's DJVU. Um, and that file format was used for objects that are more uh, book-like um, in, in their format. Uh, a, there are a couple of um, objects here that are more like brochures or catalogs and they are Xerox copies. So it felt a little bit better to use that file format. So here is one of them and I'll show that. This is um, the catalog for the China Jew 4th 1989 exhibition, which was a very big exhibition for AAC. Um, it underwent several iterations, and it was an artistic response um, to the Tenmen Square massacre. Um, so it was an immediate response by AAC to call for artists to, um, to respond to what they were seeing um, happening in China. Um, and then later there were, was a traveling exhibition. And after that too, there have been some um, further exhibitions honoring like the 25th anniversary. Um, but this type of object, it seemed better, and it was the recommendation of Wikimedia NYC that I maybe investigate whether this would be a good format to use. So for this project, we created a new category. Um, it's the Asian American Art Center, and you can use this to filter to all the images that belong in this category. 
So that is where you can find the Asian American Arts Center's flyers on Wikimedia Commons by searching for or filtering to the Asian American Arts Center category. And we hope to add even more materials like press releases in the future. But I wanted to circle back to an even deeper layer of this project, what is really the big other part of this project and why Wikimedia Commons becomes such a good solution for making these objects discoverable above and beyond what has already been stated. Because in more recent years, a lot of people from various information communities and at the Wikimedia Foundation have been working on the application of structured data from Wikidata to improve access searchability and exploration of the materials on Wikimedia Commons. And this really dovetails with the type of problems we are addressing and the solutions we are building for cultural heritage resources at Semantic Lab. This will not be new to the librarians and archivists listening, but I just wanted to take a second to discuss structured data and the use of standard controlled vocabularies for others who are attending and don't think about cataloging necessarily. I'm old enough and perhaps some others are old enough to recognize this image. It is a card from a card catalog, probably from a library. This card helps people find what they are looking for. In this example, someone can look up the title of the book, The Fine Art of Literary Mayhem, in the catalog alphabetically, and they would tell them the book is on a shelf in the library under 809. This card would be findable by someone looking for this book by title. In this traditional type of card catalog, there would have been additional cards available for the book under the author name as is underlined or by subject term as are found in the box. These are all set official terms belonging to some vocabulary of terms like those the Library of Congress manages in order for those agreed upon terms to be used to help people find what they need. And the reason I show these traditional conventions is because such conventions also exist for resources and information in the digital world. In the digital world, applying known unambiguous titles or terms from what can be thought of as standard vocabularies to resources or things helps the web and other digital systems understand exactly what is being referenced and helps guide information and resource seekers to what they need. It also helps interconnect objects of, or information from disparate sources through these known terms. Like when you see the info box on the side when you conduct a Google search. These are three different knowledge panels from Google searches I made in 2019. A few years ago in 2017, supported by a fellowship from Metro, I tried to interconnect objects from various archives and collections using these types of standard terms for materials by or pertaining to the Chinese American artist Martin Wong. I thought this would create an interesting graph of resources to explore from collections with very diverse contexts, modern, American, New York downtown, Asian American. Stitched together, they could represent Martin Wong better than any one, coll one collection could. I work with materials from many collections like MoMA and NYPL, the New Museum and Fales Library at NYU, but also the Asian American Arts Center. However, there was a real problem trying to use terms from standard vocabularies when trying to interlink these resources. As an example, on the left is a schematic of all the names found across all the resources with each institution's collection represented by a different color. In the case of Martin Wong, these names I looked for might be artists that he exhibited with or other collaborators. The image on the right is a visualization of the names once again, but now only showing the names I was unable to find in the standard vocabularies I was using. Blue represents the Asian American Art Center. And as you can see, it re represents the lion's share of the names not found, whereas the names from materials from bigger, more mainstream institutions and arguably, arguably, therefore, representing more mainstream contextualizations of Martin Wong had very few names not found. If you think of inclusion in these vocabularies as helping connect information seekers to information, this clearly has grave consequences as to which narratives or versions of history are easier to find. Although one of the places I looked for standard terms during that study was Wikidata. My recommendation at the end of the project was that Wikidata was a place to turn to contribute names from these othered histories. So why is this and what is Wikidata? Wikidata is a knowledge base and can be thought of as a database of records. And to bridge off what we discussed, a record might represent a term. From the outset, Wikidata was designed as a panlingual resource since the original intent was for a record to store the links to Wikipedia articles about the same subject in different language Wikipedia. The reason the Martin Wong project ended with Wikidata as a good platform for creating new terms is because 
Similar to Wikipedia, it is an open participatory platform. Other standard vocabularies do not follow this type of model. At the time, using Wikidata for work in libraries, archives, and museums was not that common, though in the meantime, it has definitely become more common, especially for uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI work, precisely for the reason I described above. So to return to the main objectives of our current equity in action project with AAC Flyers, a second main objective was to support the uploads to Wikimedia Commons by creating records for the exhibitions on Wikidata. These newly created exhibition records on Wikidata have been interlinked with the flyers on Wikimedia Commons, providing a higher layer of discoverability on the web. But the games go even deeper in our work to create records on Wikidata. In some ways, this project makes good on the takeaways of the Martin Wong project. For every exhibition record, we not only included information like dates and location, for every record, we listed out every participating artist and contributor. But in order to include these people in these exhibition records, their records have to exist on Wikidata. So in addition to creating records for the exhibition, the records for artists, collaborators, and organizations often had to be created from scratch. We are creating a whole new vocabulary of terms in the standard vocabulary for describing the Asian American Arts Center's history. This slide features just a portion of the Wikidata record created for the 2007 AAC two-person exhibition, Bing Lee Bovi Lee. Some of you may already know Bing Lee's work, um, especially since there's a full wall of his work in the Canal Street station on the stairs to the N art line. The people that needed to be included in this record were the members of the selection panel committee and the artists. So here, for example, the Wikidata records for both artists in the show, Bing Lee and Bovi Lee, and three out of the four selection committee members, Mako Wakaza, Jung Lee Sanders of Art Projects International, and Eugenie Tsai, curator at the Brooklyn Museum, needed to be created. And in general, across all the exhibitions, over 700 people and organizations have been linked to AAC's exhibition records, and now to each other. Of those 700 plus, around 55%, almost 400 records needed to be created from scratch. These now exist as terms that others can implement in their own work to describe resources. And in a broader context, these terms now exist as what is known as linked open data for joining information and networking information across the web. What begins to unfold through creating these exhibition records is a graph of interlinked associations, a graph of communities and allies. This is an example of the flyer for the detained exhibition at AAC in 2006 an exhibition bringing together the Asian American community and Arab American community to talk about race and exclusion. As the exhibition record is created, you can see how it becomes the focal point and intersection of people and organizations. The records are powerful expressions, graphs of communities and alliances emanating from the shows that are now linked together. Zooming back into the specifics of our work, I wanted to briefly cover a particular step in our process. This is an example using the artist Mary Ting. For the people records, we created a baseline of what information would be valuable to contribute in the scope of our project, which is essentially an art documentation project. On the left is the final model for person records and the type of information we try to find for our records. This means that if the record already existed, we tried to fill in any information here that was not already present in the record. For people for whom we created records from scratch, we tried to add as many data statements as we could according to this model. And the statements are gender, occupation, place of birth, date of birth, official website, which is a great one to add since Google search um, plugs aggregated information from Wikidata. Um, so it's nice to have a search result that points to the artist's website. Um, has works in collection was another one, often found in artist resumes and then verifiable um, on museum websites. And then there was a whole series of identifiers um, from other databases that were parsed like Artsy and Artnet and included in the record. Awards received became an interesting mini sub project because after looking through a few dozen artist resumes from um, Bob shows, it became clear that many of them received awards from the New York Foundation for the Arts, the Pollock Krasner Foundation, or the Bronx Museum Artists in the Marketplace Fellowship. So the award list for those three were scoured for people participating in AAC events and added to these people's records. 
Um, among the artists associated with AAC shows, there were 47 that were found to have participated in the Bronx Museum Artists in the Marketplace Fellowship Program, 39 from the Pola Krasner Foundation, and 69 were awarded grants, some for multiple years um, from NIFA. As a statistic, this serves as kind of an homage to these programs. But not all records were built out to the same degree because not all information could be found for every artist. Resumes were a good starting point, and here I show an excerpt from Mary Ting's resume, but not all artists have resumes online. And there's a final list of about 60 artists that Bob Lee and I will work on together moving forward, where the amount of information we found so far was too limited to create a record yet. Citations were provided either directly from Art Asia America or from other sources. I've added an appendix at the end of um, the slide deck that lists out some sources that were very good for this project. Newspapers.com and New York Times Search were two very valuable resources for this project, for example. Like a Wikipedia article, these records can expand over time. They can be considered a collaborative work. Thomas Tam was an Asian American community activist here in New York Chinatown who passed away in 2008. These are individual snapshots of the top part of, the rec of his record on Wikidata, showing changes made over time. Thomas Tam's record was created not very long ago, just one year ago by, I believe, someone affiliated with the Smithsonian, which you can figure out if you click through the history of this record and click on the person who made it. This was the start of Thomas Tam's record, with information added that he was a co-founder of the Charles B. Wong Community Health Center in Chinatown here in New York City. In the next revision shown, there is more information connecting him to his work at CUNY and stating that he was the first Chinese American member of the Board of Trustees for the City University of New York. The record already traced Tam's very important work as an activist for health services for the Chinatown community and in education. But through our work, we added an additional layer to his record to include his activity as filmmaker. On the flyer for the show stream segment from 1997, Tom Tam showed his re film reel at the Asian American Arts Center in the context of that, of that show. In addition, we added information specifically acknowledging his role as the executive director of the Asian American Research Institute at CUNY from 2001 to 2006. These are the ways in which Wikidata can be used effectively to collaboratively document these histories and create textured biographies of people and organizations. And in the case of Thomas Tam, I'm sure there is so much more that could be added to his record. So in the spirit of being a proper report, uh, and I actually do like numbers, um, here is a more quantitative look at what we've accomplished. 103 flyers have been contributed to Wikimedia Commons, equaling 352 individual files. On Wikidata, we have created 110 exhibition records. The reason there is a discrepancy between the number of flyers on Commons and the number of records on Wikidata is that some of the exhibitions were collaborations with one or two other organizations and AAC does not own the co copyright necessarily. We linked to date 706 people and organizations to those records of which somewhere between 50 and 60% of them were new. I also wanna mention here another component of our work that I did not go into detail about because this report is already very dense. But all the Wikidata records connected to AAC exhibitions were exported from Wikidata and created as stub records on Semantic Lab's own Wikibase. We hope to use these stub records to pilot further, more experimental projects there. On a mechanical level, I also wanted to show how the exhibition files and Wikidata records are interlinked. On the common side, on the structured data tab, depicts is used to say, that what is depicted in the file is what is represented by the uptown downtown Wikidata record. In the future, a convention may develop as to how further information in the Wikidata record should be duplicated on the Commons page. So I'll be keeping an eye out for that. On the Wikidata side, using the image property, as you see here, you link the image from Commons. And one final, final note, um, I wanted to show that this idea of these communities being connected, as I showed in the slide previously, um, in graph data is not just aspirational, but now exists. Um, as some in the room already know, the data is queryable on Wikidata via something known as a Sparkle endpoint. Um, I don't want to explain Sparkle further than that, 
because um, it's very, it becomes a little too technical, but I just wanted to show uh, a query. This is essentially a query I've written um, and it could probably be more concisely written, but this is the one I have right now. Um, asking a question on all the knowledge held in Wikidata. This query basically says, Wikidata show me every, everyone in every organization that participated in an AAC exhibition and show me all their affiliations, like where they worked, or which group they were a member of. So if we, I guess I didn't pre-run that query, so I will run it now. And here you can see it's running at the bottom. And I believe this slide deck will be um, made available so um, others can play with these queries as well. But it's very nice to see. So you have here, this is the link to the record. You have here the name of the person who participated in the show. And now you have the affiliation level label. So you have all the institutions um, and maybe art groups and things like that that are affiliated with this uh, with all these people who participated in AAC shows. So it's, it's very nice to see how wide ranging, but in some ways also focused um, these affiliations and this kind of these intersecting communities are. And I'll just continue to scroll a little bit. But that basically represents the report on our grant activity. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.